millions check into hotels each year. Some check into another dimension. I'm the only human being in this place, and it's found out which room I'm in. I felt like something was going to hurt me. Did you die here? That's the ultimate. Alone, afraid, and helpless. When the experiences of thousands are contained within a single building, the laws of space and time are changed. Past invades the present, and fears turn to reality. strikes and a spirit is dragged into the dark paranormal dimension, so too go their secrets. And for those who go seeking to uncover those buried mysteries, the hunter can become prey. And at the Lemp Mansion, a famous Victorian hotel in Missouri, Paranormal author Rebecca Pittman is about to learn that lesson in the most terrifying way. I was there to research the book about Lemp Mansion. And it popped up as one of the top 10 most haunted places and a lot of uh, stories were circulating about things going on there. And so I traveled there to check it out. Built in 1868, it was home for nearly a century to the Lemp family millionaire beer barons. What started as basically a small home brewery really became a beer empire in St. Louis. But it's a success story with a very dark underbelly. And all the money in the world didn't help the family. Uh, many of the family members died of heart failure, and there were also four suicides. This was a very tragic family affair. Tracking down the mysterious details behind these tragedies is why the paranormal author has come here. Unsolved mysteries drive me nuts. I feel the research is key. If you don't understand that house, what it's been through, you only have half a story. I think you'll find these really helpful. Thank you. So they're handing me documents and photographs and diaries that weren't open to the general public. Thank you. If you experience ghosts and you don't understand who they are in relation to that property or what happened to them, what's the point? But what if hunting down the past makes you a target? All of a sudden, the candle on the mantle lit itself. The dead will find you, whether you go looking for them or not. They're on a mission to communicate. If you're in their territory, you are also in their crosshairs. They were kind enough to leave all the rooms unlocked so that I could just go around. The minute you stepped out in that hallway, it was almost like a shadow attached to you. The house engulfs you. The atmosphere engulfs you. I had heard stories of people hearing the portrait at the end of the hall moaning. You immediately feel like you aren't by yourself. There wasn't a time when I was there that I didn't feel like something was watching me. Pushing through her fears, Rebecca descends to the basement and continues with her research. I 
I felt like a voyeur that I was trespassing, that that family was still there. I can't explain it. It's a really strange feeling. You do feel a sense of sadness, and you feel a sense of loss. There's just this closeness that you feel when you're walking through there. Always felt somebody was right behind me. And there was nobody there. I can't tell you how often that you that I would turn around and do this, feeling somebody's there. The problem with digging up the past in a haunted hotel is you may not like what you find or what finds you. Who's here? I feel the hair standing up on my neck. I felt someone was about to touch my shoulder. I'm so sorry, I didn't mean to scare you. No worries, it's fine. I just wanted to let you know that we're leaving now. Mondays, the place is closed and they had were kind enough to let me have it. But what I didn't know is the staff goes home. So it was a little scary. If an entity is looking to get to someone, it's a lot easier when you are alone and isolated than with a group. They have your undivided attention. I don't remember falling asleep, but I must have. I woke up because the whole bed was going sideways. A weight was pinning my feet down. It's terrifying if you're pinned to your bed by a human being. But can you imagine that you are immobilized by something you can't even see? I laid there with my heart pounding. Something's in the room with me. in St. Louis researching her new book on the notoriously haunted Limp Mansion Inn. Author Rebecca Pittman is suddenly stalked. By an unseen ghost. I'm the only human being in this place and it's found out which room I'm in. My hand was shaking at that point. Took all the courage I had to turn that light on. When something like this happens and you're terrified, no help was going to come. That's the ultimate, alone, afraid, and helpless. I thought, what if something's sitting there and it's looking at me? There was nothing there, and the weight was gone. Well, I was pretty scared. My heart was pounding. You're so afraid you're going to see it standing in the corner looking at you. And whatever it was left its mark. 
all I could see were two perfect shoe indentations in the blanket right next to my feet. Two perfect indentations. That's a very scary thing. This spirit wanted to leave a little calling card. Even though it didn't reveal itself, it left those two little footprints to tell her, I just did this to you. Thinking, OK, 5.30, they'll be here at 10. I still have all these hours alone. Spirits may pierce the veil between the living and the dead, using their pure energy and emotion to communicate. And that's driven by the need to convey information to the living. But what information is it trying to convey? In the morning, Rebecca asks to be moved to the Lavender Suite. Over a century ago, it was the master bedroom for William Lemp Sr. and his wife. So being in their room was chilling. It felt like, am I welcome here? Do they want me writing a book about them? An entity may not want to reveal itself to the people that it's targeting, and it likes that, hiding in the invisibility. You said you wanted company, so here we are. My sister lives in St. Louis, and she and her son was going to stay that night. It's the ultimate way to move around, torment, and if you can't see it, that's even more scary. Until it finally reveals itself. Suddenly, with this huge antique chandelier over the bed, it just started going crazy. I started videoing it with my cell phone. There's no way you could even turn a, a switch to make it do what it was doing. I started talking to it and asking it questions. If that's somebody making the light flash stop. I thought I would see if it would communicate with me. If that is somebody, can you make them start flashing again? And then I said, is there someone in the room? There was a slight time lapse, and then it blinked once. An intelligent haunting is one where the spirit is aware, and that can be the most dangerous because it is a scenario that is pulling you in personally and is directed at you. Are you someone that stayed in this room? it did one more time, and then it quit responding to me. Because of the room we were in, I believed it was in William Limp, communicating in some way. The question is, what's the message? It just felt like, this is insane. Look at all of the stuff that keeps happening. I just thought, this place is wicked haunted. It just felt like there was something going on everywhere. <laughs> I just sat up. It felt like ice water went through my veins. Right outside the door, I heard bang, 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 woo, really loud and my heart was just pounding. You're waiting to see what else is coming. Was it right there in the hallway? Your, your question, did I really hear that? <laughs> so I looked over, my sister's still asleep, but my nephew was up on his elbow. I said, did you hear those gunshots? Okay. You stay here. I open the door, and there's nothing. Could it have been a gunshot outside the house? And there's no way. It was right there in the hallway. <laughs> the 
There's no way not to be scared. <laughs> to dig up buried secrets at the Lemp Mansion Inn in St. Louis. Author Rebecca Pittman now fears she's being forced to relive one of its darkest moments. The violent suicide of former owner William Lemp Sr. I got scared because I was standing where William Lemp shot himself. <laughs> When Rebecca hears gunshots in the middle of the night, she's tapping into the residual energy of William Sr.'s suicide. But what does the spirit that hunted her down want to tell her? I thought, why am I hearing this? Is this a clue that I'm supposed to unravel? If it is, why did she hear three gunshots? Wouldn't have kept shooting after he'd shot himself. Could it be the echo of the other two Lemp suicides? I knew three people had shot themselves in the house. On February 13th of 1904, William Lemp Sr. took his own life in that room by shooting himself in the head. 18 years later, William Lemp Jr. followed in his father's footsteps. Charles Lemp was the last of the Lemp's to kill himself. I couldn't help but feel a connection to the history of the people there and what was happening. I wanted to get a sense of what led them to such a tragic ending. Once back home, Rebecca keeps digging for answers. When I looked at the coroner report for William Lemp Sr., I literally went, oh my gosh. I went, what? He had to have missed twice before the fatal shot. William Lemp may have missed two shots when he attempted to commit suicide because he was nervous. He was hesitant, his hand was shaking, and he may have flinched at the moment he pulled the trigger the first two times. Nobody at Lent Mansion had heard that. None of the owners knew that part. And I'm sitting here going, this is insane. That changed the narrative of how he died. And it's exactly what was trying to be communicated to her that night. <laughs> Did you hear those gunshots? No, but I heard a dog barking. I said, no, there's no dog in the house. Police reports reveal that Charles Lemp shot his dog before killing himself. That's when the hairs just, I went, oh my gosh, there's the dog. Could have been, in Charles's own way, an act of compassion, not wanting to leave his dog behind without him. <laughs> Some believe the illegitimate child of William Lemp Jr. haunts the attic. I know for a fact whatever kicked my bed was not an adult. I know that it was a child. But why did these entities choose to reach out to Rebecca? I'd like to think maybe they thought I understood their story. And they were saying, we are still here. Here's pieces of our story. And the way the book is written, you can feel my empathy for these people. If anyone were to ask me, where do you think the hot spots are at Lent Mansion? I would just, just walk in the door. Uh, they're everywhere. It's one thing to be chased down by a spirit who knows you're digging for the truth. It's quite another putting yourself in its crosshairs just for a cheap thrill. Especially if you happen to head to rural America to visit a hotel famous for its wild west coasts. Like paranormal thrill seeker Brittany Maru and her mom, Desta Highbeck. I came to the hotel in 2017 for a night getaway with my daughter. 
Hello. We're just checking in, please. My name is Desta. I surprised her, and she was super excited about it. <laughs> I was really curious about the spirit world. Brittany is here <laughs> hoping to see a ghost or two. That would be amazing. When you register for the hotel, they do have a list of rooms that have paranormal activity. Thank you so much. At the hotel, my expectations were to prove that the paranormal was real. And she's come to the right hotel with the right past. For years, the town ran red with the blood of lawmen, outlaws, and innocent bystanders, all of whom some say still roam this old hotel. It was a very wild place back in the 1800s. But Desta isn't quite buying all the ghost hype. I was on the fence as a believer. I was 50-50. All the same, she picks what the hotel claims to be its most haunted room. This is great. There's nothing wrong with wanting to go to paranormal hotspots because you are interested in it. We call that legend tripping. The problem is that when you put yourself into the legend, you can become a target. In other words, paranormal prey. But I felt somebody was watching us. I looked around and I didn't see anybody. What's the matter? I don't, I don't know. I, I thought I saw some. If I knew then what I know now, I would have not checked in. I really didn't think anything was going to happen to us that night. Getting ready for bed. I had the room set on 65. I like a room cold. Mind you, it's winter time, and that's how I like to sleep. An entity will only place its trap in a location where it knows it will get prey. <sighs> Good night, sweetie. Good night. And what better place than a room where a weary traveler is vulnerable so that's where they are going to spin their paranormal web. <sighs> Disturbed in her sleep, Desta wakes to what feels like an inferno. <sighs> I checked the thermostat and it was set to 92. I'm like, why is this on 90 degrees? Turn it back down to 65. It seems like this could actually be an example of the ghost manipulating the electromagnetic field to be able to up that temperature to scare them away. Got the room cooled down, went back to bed. That's when I started getting scared. In a Midwest town once notorious for its outlaws and murderers, Desta Hybeck and her daughter Brittany Maru check into its most haunted hotel. This is great. On the hunt for a paranormal experience. But they soon realize be careful what you wish for. The TV flips on, and it's the snowy screen, and it was very loud. Did you turn on the TV? What? No. Do you have the remote there? No. The remote is way across the room. So I knew Brittany had not touched it, and I did not touch it. The TV just turned on. I, I didn't turn it on. I heard fuzzy noise coming from the snowy channel. If you think about it, a spirit is energy. So for it to manipulate other things that utilize energy, it's probably the easiest way for it to make itself known. Oh, I thought the TV was on the fritz, so I unplugged it from the wall. Okay, well, I have no idea how that happened. That's creepy. What should have been a short night of sleep became the longest night of sleep in our lives. I heard this, it sounded like spurs on the back of cowboy boots. I'm like, 
Where is that sound coming from? And that's when I seen just something in my room. I felt very, very afraid. I felt like something was going to hurt me. What? Brittany says, Mom, there's a man standing in our corner. Do you, do you, do you see him? I don't see what you're talking about. I said, Brittany, I don't see anything. I could see every detail on him. You could see the badge. You could see a mustache. Oh, he's, he's right there. You really can't see him? I don't see it. And she kept saying, Mom, he's standing right there. I was very nervous. He's right in the corner. You don't see him? She was white as a ghost, and she was very frightened. Since Brittany was the one that was actually looking to have a paranormal experience, she's already more susceptible to one happening. That makes her an easy target for the activity. But it's not just Brittany. I kept hearing, answer your phone. What is going on? I looked around the room, and there was nobody in there with us. I was very scared at this point. I could hear a vibration of a phone. Is that your cell phone? No. Are you sure? She asked if my phone was ringing. No, no. My phone's dead. Oh, God. My phone is off. I don't understand what's going on. The fear that I felt at that time, I really wanted to just leave. I wanted to run out of that hotel and be, and not feel that fear anymore. The hair was standing up on my body. Oh my God, we have to get out of here. What is happening? Somebody did not want us in that room. Very worried about our safety at that point. <laughs> All of a sudden, I heard giggling in the hallway. Oh, God. Maybe there's somebody can help us. <laughs> they were female giggles. <laughs> and looked out the hallway, and there was nobody out there. Is something horrible going to happen to us? Is there more ghosts going to make their presence known? I saw a woman that had no face. Oh my God. Oh my God. No eyes, no mouth, no nose. That's when I knew Brittany absolutely saw a ghost with the man in the corner. You're dealing with a time and a place that was probably not very pleasant for women. This entity is uh, warning them that they need to get out of there. But it may already be too late. It felt like I was paralyzed. Something has control of my body. Felt my arms move, so it was very uniformed. Mom! I couldn't move my head, I couldn't move my legs. Mom! Uh, 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 what is happening? Uh, what? I tried shaking her. Nothing would get her to move. She's just stiff as a board. This was something evil. Very horrifying. At a famously haunted hotel in the American Midwest, guests Desta Hybeck and Brittany Maru were hoping for a fun, ghostly encounter. This is great. Not to become prey for terrifying spirits. Something took over my body. The activity was escalating to the extremities. Hey, stop! What? Uh, are you okay? What is happening? I was very, very scared. I'm like, okay, what is going on? Somebody let go of her. Oh my god! 
Something definitely was possessing my body. It invaded me completely. Mom, what is happening? In that moment, you are in the most dangerous possible paranormal situation because now you have lost your free will. Oh! Oh! Can you hear me? Are you? We were both yelling at each other. Mom? The fear in both of us at this point took over. You are under the control of some other force, and you don't know what it could make you do. Help! This spirit was holding me against my will. The energy that was in that room didn't want to let her leave. They wanted to keep her. It was very terrifying. Help! As Desta feels herself slipping away, Something else enters the room. There is a blue light. Mom! And it released me. Oh. And with it, Whatever drove out that darkness is gone, too. Whatever darkness was inside of her, it was gone. <sighs> Definitely feel like there was something there to relieve her of whatever was horribly attached to her. Oh, oh God. We have to get out of here. Get out of here now. At that point, I, I went and turned the lights on in the room. I saw nothing. Shaking with fear, they decide to get out as quickly as possible. We're leaving. I'm done. That was the fastest I've ever packed up a room. I think it took minutes. On the way home, free from the spirit's clutches, they take stock of their haunted hotel experience. I just really think these ghosts have not realized they've passed to the other side, and I think they're stuck here. <laughs> like the ladies in the hallway. The hotel was a saloon back in the day, so when I heard the giggling, I thought maybe it was the women from back in the day giggling, going up and down the hallway and, and coming from the saloon. Help! They try to make sense of the entity that paralyzed Desta. I thought maybe it was an evil spirit that did not want us there. And the blue light that seemed to free her? I put the connection together, like something was there to make sure whatever had a hold of her was not gonna attached to her again. When this blue orb enters into the room, what that could be is it could be some sort of protective spirit, uh, what some might call a guardian angel, coming in there to alleviate the situation and to break Testa and Brittany free. Some at the hotel believe the cowboy is the ghost of a sheriff that once ran the town. He was a protector, and he was there just checking on the guests in his hotel. After this experience, I'm a very strong believer of the paranormal, and it's out there. And if you think it can't happen to you, it can. It can happen to anybody. It definitely amped up my beliefs on the paranormal world, knowing that the spirit world exists that they are walking around us all the time, and we just don't know about it. Oh my God! When I go to stay at hotels now, I definitely do my research before I stay at it, and if it has any inkling of paranormal at it, I will not stay at it. I would never willingly put myself in that position again.
Hunting down ghosts for kicks in a haunted hotel is one thing. But what if you check in with a serious mission? To prove they exist. And in the American Midwest, at a B&B &B with a seriously haunted reputation, Mike Walker and his wife are checking in to do just that. It's an old historic house. It's a beautiful house. We went there just to see if we can find anything, any proof of the paranormal there. The B&B &B is just a stone's throw from a battlefield, believed to be one of the most haunted in the state. Battlefields are often extremely haunted because they are sites of misery, violence, hatred. It can create whole areas that are potentially haunted just from that negative energy alone. Nothing Mike hasn't encountered before. I am retired from the military, and I have been working in uh, state prisons for 27 years. I didn't really think the B&B was haunted. Hope you enjoy your stay. Should be fun. I was basically doing it for fun. It's the last room on the right. OK, thank you. There's a little weekend of, you know, venture. Turned out to be a lot more than that. As darkness falls, Mike and his wife go on the hunt. The owners of the B&B gave my wife and I free run of the house to investigate. Is anybody there? Did you die here? We were hoping to reach somebody that lived in the house over the past 150 years. The owner, child, anybody. When you have free reign over a location, you can actually design and set up the experiments that you want to do in order to see if you can make activity happen. My wife was uh, holding the, the electronic voice recorder, and she was asking questions, see if she can get a reply. What is your name? Investigation becomes a, a prime experience. It becomes something that you can't always get other places. And yet, the results are pretty much what Mike expected. You getting anything? Nothing. Not getting anything. We spent some time there trying to get voice recordings. What is your name? Uh, anything for the EMF detector, and nothing happened. Disappointing, given the owner's story about how haunted the b, &B is. Entering the paranormal world, it's like walking down a dark alley in a strange place. When there's a certain series of events that have the power to imprint on the environment, it's going to stay there. It's going to resonate. <gasps> you come in aggressive, things can escalate very quickly. In the American Midwest, in a B&B &B said by many to be haunted, <laughs> ghost hunters Mike Walker and his wife are there to find proof of the paranormal. So they decide to turn it up a notch. Let's go down to the basement. OK. The owners of the B&B &B said, when you go down in the basement, you'll experience more paranormal activity down there than you would anywhere else in the house. Basements are considered to be the heart of the haunting. Can you hear me? 
because that is where the power seems to be. It has all the right minerals in it to record and amplify energy, and it basically becomes one big paranormal recording device. The further they go, the more Mike senses they're not alone. I started feeling very uneasy there. And I never felt like that before in my life. There was nothing being moved about the, the basement at all. There was absolutely nothing that would point to me being that uneasy. When people encounter this type of a feeling, and you just know, this is not an entity I want to encounter. I was creeped out. I was totally creeped out. What's the matter? Come sit down, come. You okay? Here, take this. She passed the voice recorder off to me while she went around taking pictures with her tablet. This is the actual audio recording that Mike captured in the basement. And we're still in the basement. The EMF detector wasn't going off, and there was no movement other than my wife and I. I don't even know how you can see dark shadows when you're in the dark. Really, really black down here. Mm -hmm. Suddenly, they pick up something. And that's when it happened. The EMF detector kept building and building. I felt like I wanted to crawl out of my skin. I want to get out of this basement. What's in the room? What entities in this room? That's my breathing a lot through his nose. Get freaked out. I felt a sharp pain in my hand, and all of a sudden, the EMF went flying. Please turn the light on. I'm getting freaked out. It was kind of frantic. I wanted the lights on immediately. I felt like something hit my hand. Something hit your hand? There's a bruise. Right there. Oh, my. What the heck would just strike out and knock a EMF detector out of somebody's hand? Because I knew it wasn't my wife. Clearly, the message that is being conveyed is, I'm in charge and I can hurt you if I want. Let's see. I interpret that as a warning. I interpret that as, get out of here. In the light of morning, they check out Mike's hand. Looked at my hand, and the mark was a raised red bruise. That mark is from something paranormal hitting my hand. Mike later hears about a Confederate soldier who's said to haunt the basement of the B&B. Yeah. He was a Confederate general, and he had raiders, and they basically uh, went on raiding parties and stopped at this bed and breakfast on his way to battle 
But for Mike, one thing is perfectly clear. They'll know who it was. There was something down there. They didn't want me or my wife detecting them down there. I didn't believe in the paranormal until we had an experience there. And then I started believing in it, that there's actually something out there. This uh, experience changed me because it shows that the paranormal has an evil side to it. Ugh. Something to consider if you ever get the idea to chase down a ghost. Sometimes they bite back. Millions check into hotels each year. Some check into another dimension. It had some force behind it. We heard an animalistic growl. Angry is not the word for what I saw in his face. When the experiences of thousands are contained within a single building, the laws of space and time are changed. Past invades the present, and fears turn to reality. Working in a hotel can be a rich and rewarding experience, unless you happen to get a job in a haunted hotel, where, as the new face, you become fresh blood for its dark spirits. That's exactly what happened here at this historic luxury hotel in the old American West, where Brandon Wilson has just landed the job of guest services manager. It was a new opportunity for me. I did feel like it was a step up. It seemed a lot more fun and important than what I had been doing. Okay, how are you? Good morning. Good morning. I was just talking with the front desk. Amazing stay. The main functions of the job were uh, greeting guests, making sure guests were always happy. Glad to hear it. We'll see you next I time. I loved it. The hotel was built in 1911 for the rich and the elite uh, from all around the country. So there was cattle barons, politicians, um, movie stars, all sorts of folks were coming to the hotel. I was very into history, so I instantly sort of felt like I belonged there. But the hotel also has a dark history, marked by murders, suicides, and the hauntings of the undead. I'd kind of heard about all of the different things that were happening around the hotel. I definitely didn't believe any of them. But his staff members feel otherwise. From day one, a staff member would say, hey, did anything happen to you yesterday? or this happened to so-and-so yesterday. Room 314 didn't pass inspection again. Who's on housekeeping? My housekeeping staff. They tell ghost stories, saying that rooms had been messed up after they had cleaned them. Windows would be open and sheets would be on the floor. But as the new man in charge, Brandon isn't buying it. I had zero belief in anything paranormal. I assumed it was someone trying to get more hours by not cleaning a room. So I decided I was going to put a stop to that. I actually said in one of our staff meetings, in a rather stern way, that if you are caught messing up a room or telling ghost stories, then there would definitely be repercussions. With every change, the new boss has no idea what dark forces he's stirring up. You need to do a lot more work before you enter an old establishment. You need to find out what events happened there 
in order to grasp anything you might encounter. Weeks into his new job, Brandon is asked to supervise the weekend shift, which means staying overnight at the hotel. I was responsible for everything from maintenance to housekeeping to the restaurant to the banquet rooms. It was kind of a, a real big weekend for me, and I, I didn't want to mess it up. Thought I would go to bed early. I went to bed in my clothes to be ready to go in the morning. Being new to a haunted location usually makes you a target because Everybody else has either encountered the spirit and had their scary experience or has learned to dismiss the activity. So when you're new, you're the fresh meat. There was no warning that anything was about to happen. I woke up absolutely freezing. And all the sheets, everything was on the floor. I did wonder if someone was perhaps messing with me. But I had the deadbolt on the door. So I knew there's no way to get in. I definitely knew something was out of the ordinary, but I didn't want to admit it to myself at that point. I was very rattled by the experience. I just absolutely couldn't explain what happened. There are many negative entities whose intentions are not good and they may be setting up a trap to pull you in to do some sort of harm to you. Too shaken to sleep, Brandon heads down to the hotel basement to get an early start on the next day's workload. One of the things they asked me to do was sort through all the large quantities of things in the basement to find the things that were valuable and then the things that needed gotten rid of. So it was probably around 2.30, 3 o'clock when I decided to go to the basement. The basement of the hotel takes up an entire city block. It's very dark. It's Definitely a, a strange place to be. I guess I was looking for excuses to stay awake. It was probably the first time that I had witnessed anything that I just absolutely couldn't explain in any way in my mind. He's also down here on personal business. My fiance at the time, was looking for a hope chest. And she had asked me to bring home a, a very cool trunk that I found down in the basement. Spirits like things the way they are. When someone new comes in and disturbs that status quo, it stirs them up, it angers them, it disrupts what is normal for them. There was an insert in the trunk. I laid it down right next to the exit. While Brandon drags the chest out towards the service elevator, something else remains behind.
when I returned, so I immediately noticed that the trunk insert was not where I had left it. The insert was approximately 150 feet away. The amount of force that the entity is able to show to Brandon, it's a sign that there is a lot of power behind the intention. And the intention is clearly to target the new guy. I could definitely feel something was different this time. As I was walking, it seemed like things intensified. That was the first time that my body started telling me that something was not right. I don't know if you've been outside before lightning strikes, but it was sort of that feeling in the air. As spirits manifest, they will actually uh, change the electromagnetic field of the area around them. Brandon could be in some real serious danger. Something was off, and I did not want to find out what it was. And whatever it is, it's ready to strike. A large shadow appeared out of nowhere. Something that I can't explain is happening. That was the most scared that I have ever been. At an historic hotel in America's Southwest, the arrival of a new employee, Brandon Wilson, draws the fury of a dark spirit who turns the rookie manager into a human bullseye. I realized it definitely was not a human. It was just a very large black mass. When you see a black mass standing in front of you, that's something you don't want to mess with. And something that you have no idea what its intentions could be. My heart was beating quickly. I absolutely 100% knew that it was only looking at me and only interested in me. And it did not want me in that basement. But instead of attacking, it disappears. It's a cat and mouse game in which it's showing you, I can be here when I want to be, but I can make myself disappear. As I'm running, the large dark figure, it just completely vanished. Because Brandon didn't heed that initial warning, the spirit's going to try to amp up the experience to get what it wants. And right now, that's getting rid of a new threat to its territory. It appeared out of nowhere very large and just not moving and then I hear a really loud sound behind me now there was two things in the basement that did not want me there at that time things were escalating quickly our heating system started to pop and it started to pop closer and closer and closer. I could tell something was coming right for where I was standing. Because Brandon is exhibiting such fear, other spirits that are there could be drawn to that to get him even more terrified. I decided I was going to take my chances um, running past the dark figure rather than deal with the unknown sound behind me. I'm 
screaming at it. And it instantly just disappears. I just ran as fast as I could for the exit. By morning, Brandon still can't come to grips with the idea that he's working in a haunted hotel. I'm still trying to rationalize things in my head that everything's fine and I'm, I'm tired and I'm stressed out because I'm nervous about doing a good job. I was definitely hoping that everything was done at that point and I wasn't gonna experience anything else. But with dark spirits drawn to fresh blood, that's unlikely. If a place has been around for 100 years, it has a lot more chance to have multiple hauntings. It's a simple equation. If time and tragedy equals a haunting, the older the establishment, the more the haunting. You just put it on that table for now. We had a bridal show that was going on in the hotel where all of the vendors and everyone had come in to set up their things. Everything from cakes and wedding dresses to flowers and DJ booths, anything you could have at a wedding. With everything loaded in for the next day's right, big event, day. Brandon locks up. I assured everybody that, you know, all of their very valuable things would be safe and uh, just went off to bed for the night. The paranormal is more than just a ghostly experience. It's history coming to life. And more often than not, the paranormal is the way for that history to push back. The next morning, there was all of the vendors ready to go in to the show. But something has thrown a wrench into the plans. It's a very weird feeling of not having any clue what you can do to solve a problem. The entire room was a complete and total disaster. I have no explanation for this. It's almost an unexplainable feeling of realizing that there's something happening that is more powerful than I thought. Brandon is forced to face the reality that his workplace is truly haunted. That had to be something paranormal. Seeing that objects can be moved and things can be destroyed, I felt like I was at risk. This is the worst of all possible worlds. Whatever this was, was clearly waiting to attack. What are you gonna tell the vendors? There's something going on at the hotel that is definitely malevolent. And as the new manager, he's the prime target. Oh, this felt very personal. It felt very directed at me. The past is revealing itself, and there's probably no stopping it. I'll go call the vendors. Whatever was going on knew me personally and was attacking me. I was frightened. As the newest employee at a haunted hotel in America's Southwest, Brandon Wilson is fresh blood for dark entities. Ah! Hell bent on driving him away. It was frightening just knowing 
that a ghost or a spirit or something was attacking me personally without directly attacking me physically. The paranormal is really something you have to experience. And when you do, you're a believer. I was wrong about paranormal things happening in the hotel. I 100% believe that there's something happening here. After chewing out his staff for believing in ghosts, their new boss is forced to backtrack. I basically had to tell everyone, I'm really sorry that I came down on you all so hard for your stories. I definitely uh, had to eat crow with my staff. He also has to accept who or what might be behind the latest show of force. Ghost Bride. The most famous story at the hotel is a bride and groom uh, who were on their honeymoon. And the husband disappeared for a little while to get a drink at the bar downstairs. After a while, she started to wonder, you know, where her new husband was. She wandered down to the bar just in time to see him and a prostitute. <laughs> in a fit of rage, <laughs> the bride kills the husband, the prostitute, and herself, <laughs> thereby leaving them in that hotel as spirits for eternity. <laughs> I was thinking, what's going to happen next? But the hotel's new manager can't just walk away. Leaving the job wasn't an option at that point. There was nowhere for me to go, so I had no choice but to stay. There's a gradual escalation of activity going on here. And as that activity escalates, it becomes more personal, and it crosses a very dangerous line. And if you're alone, clearly you're an easier target. Which, for a manager working the night shift, is usually the case. Well, the nightly routine at our hotel was to put a copy of the bill and a newspaper by everyone's door. That was a nice touch for our guests and uh, made our jobs a little bit easier in the mornings. And it's, you know, between 3 and 4 in the morning. It's very quiet that time of night, so if anything is moving, you can hear it. I see a guy walking towards me. Don't think anything of it other than it's kind of a strange time for someone to be walking in the hallways. The jacket that he was wearing was kind of an old-fashioned jacket. I was just getting ready to say good morning. Is there anything I can, I can do to help you, or do you need to check out? And I looked up, and he was completely not there anymore. If he opened a door, I would have known about it. I was definitely scared. Suddenly, the hallway is ice cold. We all have energy fields around us. And when something foreign or threatening enters that field, it's going to put us on alert. I needed to leave as quickly as I could. But there's nowhere to run. I stared directly at him. He stared directly at me. I didn't want to turn my back to anything. I was afraid that he could show up right behind me at any second. Causing the new 
manager harm is all the spirit seems to want. When I spoke to him, everything changed. He did not want me to speak to him. Angry is not the word for what I saw in his face. He wanted to do me harm. He was speeding up. He was getting closer to me. An entity that's willing to go to these lengths to attack and is letting them know, I can hurt you. I can't even describe how scared I was at the expression on this thing's face. At a haunted hotel in America's Southwest, new employee Brandon Wilson has become the target of a furious, violent spirit. He just scared the living daylights out of me. I didn't know if he was gonna throw me into some weird paranormal dimension thing. I was completely frightened and he was not happy with me. For whatever reason, I looked up and he just completely disappeared. I got out of there as quickly as I could. I've never been so scared in my life. Brandon realizes his attacker might be the dead husband of the ghost bride he encountered earlier. Just as the bride is triggered by anything that reminds her of a wedding, The cowboy could be stuck for eternity in that fit of anger or shock or surprise that he experienced when, when his new bride showed up and shot him. Instead of running away from his new job at the hotel, Brandon decides to learn more about its dark history. I decided I was going to research things that had happened there. And uncovers a rash of mysterious suicides. Like the famous actress falling from the window onto the street. There was a little boy who was ruled a suicide by falling out a window. There was a bellboy who worked there, and he hung himself one day for no apparent reason. It just, it doesn't add up. Could the dark entity from the basement have somehow played a role in these deaths and hauntings? When you start to see a high level of tragedy happening in one particular location, you have to start to wonder if it isn't that strong, malevolent presence that's actually causing this tragedy rather than being the result of it. It's definitely a dark spirit or dark spirits. Some feel that shadow people are human spirits that just don't have enough energy to manifest, while others believe that shadow people are a completely different type of entity that was never human at all. Either way, most people that encounter them are usually left with a, a feeling of being afraid. I absolutely believe there is something in the hotel that is not meaning well towards anyone. Especially any new blood like Brandon. I either needed to leave or things were going to get worse. And I, I don't know what worse is, but I didn't want to find out. Brandon is forced to call it quits and to accept the paranormal as reality. I know what it's like to not believe people. And so I understand if people are listening to my story and thinking the same thing, because that's exactly how I would have been. But once you experience something, I think if you just write things off, you're kind of fooling yourself. 
I've had zero paranormal experiences since I left. Not one thing has been unexplained in my life since I left there. All I know is I hope that nothing like that ever happens to me ever again. <laughs> In a haunted hotel, angry spirits may target new people to drive them out. Or they may do it as a warning, letting the living know that something dark and evil awaits them. In Liberty, Missouri, on a sprawling estate measuring nearly 200 acres, the Belvoir Winery, a unique wedding destination, is about to unveil its new inn. And its CEO, Jesse Limekuller, couldn't be happier. It's the winery, an event space, and an inn all in one. We wanted to have it as a hotel and an inn, but also as a big perk to our wedding business. My hopes for the inn were that it would be nice to have a place for people to get away and, you know, be a part of the history of the property. Built in the 1900s, it was once owned by a fraternal and charitable order. It's a former Odd Fellows home, which uh, back in those times would have been a place where it was where the unwanted would live. Their ritual is based on Old and New Testament teachings. At their height, they had about 1,400 lodges in the state of Missouri. Today, some of these buildings on the Belvoir estate remain vacant. Two of them used to be um, an old folks home and a nursing home. And then the other one used to be a medical hospital. Some locals believe these buildings are far from empty. I mean, as far as the paranormal, we didn't know a lot. I mean, there was rumors in the community of things going on. But it's nothing the CEO takes too seriously. I have a healthy amount of skepticism and wonder if it's just old tales or something like that as opposed to a reality. Exactly the kind of thinking that draws spirits to new blood. I was working late, about 11 o'clock at night. I heard, uh, it sounded like voices. It sounded like there was maybe three, four, five people. I assumed that it was going to be some workers or something like that. I turned around the corner and there was nobody there. And the voices that were there just stopped abruptly. It was a dead end. There's no exits on that end of the building. There was nobody around at all. I was trying to find a logic to what had happened. I felt like it was probably something mechanical in the building that made the noise, and I was just confused at the time. One of the easiest ways for a spirit to communicate is through a disembodied voice. Whatever entity was with Jesse at that time was trying to get him to pay attention to the fact that it was there. Something dead and relentless. I thought, OK, somebody's still here. And I saw something move from right to left. Immediately, I just got a big chill, and it just ran right up my back. I think the fear in that moment is just the total unknown nature of it. At Missouri's sprawling Belvoir Winery and Inn, spirits are targeting its newest employee, CEO Jesse Limecure. It's concerning because you don't have real, any real idea. OK, is this going to happen again? Is this going to happen a lot? Oh, oh hey. <gasps> Hi, Jesse. Sorry, just getting started. <laughs> But Jesse's not the only new blood at Belvoir. The latest hire is Haley Harris, the new innkeeper. 
When I heard that they were looking for a nighttime innkeeper and they couldn't find anyone, I was like, oh, that's perfect, I'll do it. We're a small team, so I do a lot of events, I work at the bar, I do all sorts of things. Haley took the job despite knowing all about the inn's haunted reputation. I knew a lot about the property, a lot about the history of it. Which all began on her first visit a few years earlier. That night, I was at the Belvoir Winery and Inn because my friend and I got tickets to a paranormal event. Part of the draw was just getting to explore the old buildings, as well as maybe see something paranormal. I felt like it existed, and I just hadn't experienced it. It was a mortuary, so it gives you kind of a weird feeling just to be down there in the first place. There was a feeling almost like there was electricity in the room. Just kind of feeling like you're not quite alone. heard an animalistic growl. Did you hear that? Yeah. I couldn't tell where it was coming from, so it was very, very petrifying. All of a the sudden, there was a feeling like someone was standing in front of us. when I saw the huge shadow figure. One of the most terrifying moments of my life. If you're dealing with a non-human type of a haunting, there's no way to confront it. There's no way to relate to that. But the new innkeeper figures it's only the mortuary that's haunted. I was just relieved to be away from the area that it happened. So I thought I could probably do my job peacefully. But that's just wishful thinking. I was the only one in the bar I had written down something on a pad of paper. After I had finished writing on it, I set it down. But when I turned around, and it had flown about five feet. All of a sudden, I saw something move out of the corner of my eye. So immediately, I looked around, looking for someone or something that did it. But at the same time, I knew no one was in the bar at all. It had some force behind it. I was being targeted at some level. I think that objects moving in a paranormal encounter is like an entity building up all that kinetic energy, and then when you release it, it's going to put out whatever it is that you want to put out into the world. I, I felt like something was behind me. 
And I saw something in front of the fireplace that really wasn't alive. At Missouri's Belvoir Winery and Inn, Two of its employees, innkeeper Haley Harris, <laughs> and CEO Jesse Leinkuhler, are fresh meat for its restless spirits, trapped for more than a century. That's when the fear hits. It's nothing I had ever experienced before. I saw a ghost right in front of me. <laughs> When an entity contacts you or makes its presence known, it might be warning you, or they just need to share that. Something tragic happened to them. There was something going on, and it was real, and it was happening to me. <laughs> Suddenly, it faded away. I didn't have any question that there are ghosts in the building. The entity may choose to just reveal itself to one person because that's the person whose attention it's trying to get. It, it doesn't mean that the others couldn't see it later on. And a few weeks later, they shift their attention to Haley. One night when I was working, I noticed the lights turning on and off. It is an old building, and so the electric can be a little bit shady. We don't often see spirits manifest because of the amount of energy it takes for them to fully bring themselves back into our field of vision. It takes a, a great deal of energy, but it can happen. And that's when I heard the thunk. There's no way someone could have been there to throw the doll. I would have seen them. The doll just fell out of nowhere. Dolls could be something malevolent, because let's face it, most people have some sort of an aversion or a fear of dolls because they don't look right to us. thinking it might just be my imagination. But I also knew that the building was haunted, so I'd comfort myself and just think they're probably not wanting to hurt you. Entities may simply be trying to communicate to keep their memory alive and to keep us from forgetting about the events that occurred in a location. Looking for answers, Jesse digs deeper into the inn's past. The uh, original building was built in the 1880s, and the Oddfellows bought the hotel building, and they turned it into an orphanage. We actually found a lot of things in the walls. We found Sunday school notes, old cards, there was also some pictures of the original orphans. I think the paranormal activity, it has to do with just the fact that they didn't have parents around. I feel like that's a very emotional situation. And it's going to stay there no matter what. It's a theory also shared by Haley. The spirits of the orphans like to mess with people. And a kind-spirited way, not a mean-spirited way. 
But what about her horrifying experience in the mortuary? It just seemed like that thing that has bad intentions that seems to stay in the other buildings was trying to get into the main one, the one that we use. I think the spirits of the orphans might know what's over there and might keep it away. I feel like they're protecting me from the entity that's in the other building that has bad intentions. When you think about the kind of innocence that children have, it's very pure. So if you are one lone negative being, a building full of child spirits is going to be a lot of light to have to contend with. The historic nature of the building and the paranormal activity that I experience, I feel like it's kind of redefined who I am as a person. It's one of those things that I, I didn't expect to have as part of my job experience. But I think, generally speaking, I, I find it to be in a very good way. It allows you to think more about your life. Working at Belvoir Winery Inn has really changed my perception of the spiritual world. I think that you have to be careful because you don't know which kind of entity you're dealing with. 